Go check it out. Go check it out. Check out Levi Ryan, he's far. I'm trying to get through these just so I can show uh, Diego right before the interview type shit. So people like, no. Because Diego is fire as fuck type shit. You know what I mean? But here's Buffalo and Jux. Um, Jux I interviewed uh, but I don't think it's posted just because at that time I wasn't feeling too good. It was it wasn't a great interview just because of me. It was my fault type shit. Buffalo Bang is insane. If you don't know who he is, check him out. Uh. We don't got time. Sorry, I'm burping. But if you're watching, check out D1V. And check out Spira, me. Because they're both fire. But I, right before the interview, I like to play who I'm interviewing. So let's go, type shit. Diego in the dark, let's go. Type shit. Bro, Death Rising, yeah, bro. But, but the thing is, Diego in the dark is rising at like an extreme rate. You know what I mean? So let's go. I'm not gonna lie, I gotta piss, and I really wanna, like, not piss during this interview, so I'm gonna piss right quick. I'm gonna let y'all watch this. When I get back, we're gonna talk to bro, okay? Real shit type shit.
Alright, it's literally 10. So, I'm going to turn the volume down. Bro, the jerseys are fucking signature type shit. Fucking amazing. I'm going to turn the volume down and I'm going to call, bro. Trying to make sure the uh, the audio is correct. Alright, here we go. Diego in the dark interview, bro. I know you fuck with, bro, if you're watching this. Um, and I know you want to learn more about him, so let's go. Type shit. Let me hit up bro on IG right quick type shit. W mousepad LMFAO type shit. I'm trying to everything. There's 
surrounding me, but then I turn it up Better watch the plot, yeah, the shout out, yonder at Two rants, I'm a fuck boy, cause I'm talking to me Do my shit, suck, turn it right, get it on the left She real suck, if I catch you, I can end up at Get your hair down, let my tears fall What we have right now, something special Get my fears out, hear the night call We're just shoot, put a chaser in his temple Do it back, I'ma hit it with a mask on Pretty sipping clay, but she sipping with no passion K boots fly, seven six to a dragon In the shield world, on our eight three passion She only wanna fuck me off the charts She only fucking with me cause I'm terrible Do you know what it's like to be in love? I spent my whole life chasing after something tangible This is the video that I watched first. Only with me because I'm terrible. Type. Oh, shit. A lot of times when, when you watch a recommended video, it's like, it's like, it's ass. So when I watched this, I was like, oh, shit, bro, it's fire. Um, I'm waiting on, I'm waiting for him to hit me up. And then we'll begin the interview type shit. So, uh, yeah. Give us just a moment because I'm waiting on Diego the Dark to hop on. I'm going to start up at the beginning. I've hit my playlist with his videos. And um, hopefully he'll get, up. he'll get on soon type shit. This video is insane, bro. It's the most recent and it's insane. <laughs> Bro, literally. Peroxide type shit. Die, die, die for my lover She know my bitch, who is this? Had to 
trash day Why did you lie? Crucified on your Sunday Lines on my wrist, I'm in pics up on Sunday Be my only one I'ma kill them off until it's only us You been ripping me apart, I hope it's just for fun Tryna have you in my arms, but I just feel jealous Lines on the ground, someone like me Teardrops on the page that we're riding Fight until I have you beside me Yeah, five, six, it's feeling boring, she might meet the 
sky Dirt tired, yet I'm gone, tell your friends goodbye Angel without wings, I wish I could teach you how to fly Yes, yeah, I wish you impressed, you wanna give me head Jewels in the crest, fuck a vest, you ain't head Fuck, 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 kind of worried because uh cheers bro yeah this this is uh we're 20 minutes in and i'm not sure where bro is I'm gonna try to call bro one time. Okay, I think he's about to hop on. Bet.
southbound on Hastings Road. Supervisor requesting you set up a quadrant ASAP. Units remain on code six status till further notice. <laughs> I'm gonna take a piss right quick. I'm gonna let y'all watch these music videos. Um, bro should be hopping in in a couple minutes. So, give it a couple minutes. I'm gonna take a piss and we'll be ready. Yeah, so before the stream, I was just playing videos, um, just trying to put people on. Um, this dude is crazy. His name is AC Flow. Bro, it's crazy. Really good. I'm waiting on bro to um, start the interview, but whatever. Uh, we'll start soon. We'll start soon. So just... Just give it a few minutes and uh, we'll start soon. Uh, <clears throat> Kira, lol, I fuck with you too, bro. I'm not sure when bro's finna hop on, but he, uh, I'm pretty sure he's finna hop on because he said my bad. Um, so I think he's playing Elden Ring right now. 
Let me check. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, bro. What's up, bro? Dude, my bad for fucking. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> straight. You're oh, straight. Uh, no, nah, it's straight. I was just worried that it wasn't gonna happen, bro. No, no, of course not. I mean, actually, that was very, very probable that it wasn't gonna happen because I could have not. I woke up. Let me. Uh, I I gotta figure out this shit. Uh, you're good. I. I think we're good. Hold up. Yeah, dude, I was taking a fucking. I like fell asleep. No, you're yeah. straight, bro. I'm just you called me on it. Discord, bro. My fucking phone started ringing, bro, and it woke me up. And if I didn't, if I if I had D and D on, bro, I would have slept. I just would have kept sleeping. It would have been fucked. <laughs> All right, bet. All right, bet. I'm glad that I called you, then. Yeah, I'm so sorry, bro. No, you're good, bro. You're good. I'm just glad that it's happening, bro. I I was really excited to interview you. All right, I am really excited to interview you. Likewise, bro. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, bro. Um. I feel like uh, you're re you're really on the come up, so it's it, it's it's uh, I feel like people right now really want to want to hear who who you are, you know what I mean? But as well as people, as you start to come up, are really gonna want to hear who you are. So it, it's really of cool. Course. Yeah, bro. Of course, I'm totally open to the thought of interview interviewing. Not even a couple months ago, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do interviews, but. I don't know. I think trying to like generate this like cloud of like mystique around you, like as an artist, just isn't good. Just, it's not good for like. I mean, also, it, I don't know. I don't it's know. good I don't for wanna, some. Like, be off. I feel you. I feel you. It, it it depends on who you are. I mean, like some people feel like they don't want to do it, but if you do want to do it, then it's good. I mean, it's it's good. You know what I mean? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, how was your day? Um, pretty good. Uh, I'm just sick, bro. I got fucking 
wax, just buy whatever the fuck I have. I might have COVID. I don't fucking know. I haven't gotten the COVID test, but I'm just sick, bro. That's why I fell asleep. I take a nap. Dude, yesterday was fucked. I really felt like I got hit by a train. And then today I'm fine. I'm just really tired, bro. I'm just, I'm just hella fucking sleepy. So I just, like, I literally just didn't even intend on falling asleep, bro. I was just laying in bed, bro. And I just, I just passed the fuck out. It's like a roll of toilet paper because I kept fucking having to blow my nose every like 30 seconds. It's straight, bro. I don't, I don't. I'm mind happy it. I slept, bro, because like two hours ago I was fucked. Like I literally, I kept sneezing, bro. I was like, I was like crying. Like my eyes were watering so bad. I was like literally like sobbing, bro. It was fucked. So in a way, like I'm happy that I got sleep because it conditioned me for this interview. Yeah, bro. Because uh, the people want to know who you are, bro. They, <laughs> they want to know about you, bro. So, so it's, uh, it's good for both of us. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I'm here to deliver that. Yeah, bro. Totally. So, uh, yeah. other than today, how has your past uh, seven days been? Bro, pretty good. I was in LA like four days ago, actually. It wasn't that long ago. Oh, bro, my perception of time is fucked. <coughs> yeah, I was in LA like seven days, not seven days ago, four days ago. I did a show. Um,. We drove there and back. So I'm from Northern California. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm from the Bay. A lot of people think I'm from the Bay Area. I'm not. I'm actually from a part of California called the Valley, which is like an hour and a half east of the Bay Area. But like all my other friends in my group and shit are all from San Francisco. So we drove from SF all the way to LA. So it's like a six hour, six and a half hour drive. So that's that was that was fun. Just like a little road trip down to LA and just did a show. It was cool, and then I got home, and I was good for two days, and then I fucking woke up, and I literally felt like I wanted to die because I was sick. And now I'm sick, I, but yeah, I feel that. Other way. than that, I'm doing good, bro. Like it's I don't know, it's just like cold, bro. It's not like weighing me down or like hindering me emotionally or anything. I'm just sick, I'm just tired. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as we can talk straight. But yeah, I was bro, in the valley. Yeah, yeah. I was in the valley for a little bit. It's it's uh it's really nice out there. My f my favorite thing about car Cali is the cars, bro. So yeah, many bro. fucking nice ass whips. Bro, I'm not you know act like I'm hella into cars because like I don't know. I feel like you're gonna no. ask me a question about cars. I'm not gonna know what to no. say. No, <laughs> cars are dope, bro. I think cars are sick. No, no, I'm not even into cars. I just when I was out there, it was like hella nice ass cars. It was cool. You know what I mean? A lot, bro. There's a lot of cool ass cars, bro. Um, bro, one city in California you can go to if you want to see cool cars, just just at random, is a city called Carmel, and it's in Northern California, and it's like it's right on the coastline. And for some reason, mm -hmm. bro, like I've been to LA, I've been, to, I mean, bro, like all my friends live in SF. Like I've been to like all like the major cities in California, and I've spent like extended periods of time at those places and like i never like see like supercars or anything but i went to carmel once for like four hours bro and i was just walking around like downtown carmel bro and i literally was seeing like rolls royces mclarens like lamborghinis fucking you name it like ferraris bro like i saw bro um the fucking electron like the electric z bro you know what i'm talking about like the bro i fucking don't even know what it's called let me google this shit nah you're bro. straight bro yeah bro, bro. i saw that shit it was really cool uh, North Cal is straight, but I really want to um, at one point visit Mount Shasta. Have you heard of that? Yeah, of course, dude. Yeah, you bro, I re I really want to go there and just visit and see it. Do that, bro. There's a lot of really cool places to see in California, and I think, yeah, bro. Um, bro, yeah, it was 2020. Wait, it's literally just a 2023 Nissan Z, bro. It was like the electric fucking like. Wait, no, 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 I'm tripping. Actually, maybe I'm not tripping. It doesn't matter, bro. It's not that fucking big of a deal. I just wanted to tell you. Cause, yeah. No, no it is, yeah, it's the Nissan Z. But this car was sick as fuck to see in person, bro. It was hella cool. It's Nissan Z. Johnson, yeah, Look it's, it it's up. Not, it, the body type isn't like the, the newer Zs, bro. It's like the Datsun Z. Like 280 and like the two, 260, I think. Or the 240, not 260, 240. Whatever. Not important, bro. <laughs> Pass that subject. Yeah, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fuck, what was I saying? Yeah, bro, California as it's advertised uh, is like beaches, Southern California, LA, and like occasionally San Francisco for the Golden Gate, but like no one recognizes California for Northern California at all, which is really sad because Northern California is 
gorgeous in my opinion like you get hella snow up here if you go up mm-hmm. toward redding it's just it's just so cold bro and it's just like redwood trees for fucking miles just mm-hmm. acres of forest bro mm-hmm. even if you go toward the beach bro like if you go toward santa cruz you also get the same thing you get the ocean you get like a bunch of fucking redwood trees and shit it's just it's mm-hmm. beautiful bro and like it's it's different like southern california yeah it's la and if you go down farther enough you're out by mexico so it is like damn near tropical and it's hella cool mm-hmm. but different energy up here like it's, it's just so are you more of a co- no, aesthetically it's it's a lot nicer in northern california in my opinion it's really no funny. no real shit real shit are you more of a cold weather person yeah actually i don't know i, don't, I really don't know anymore bro i i think i i don't know honestly i think yeah bro because it gets hot as fuck where i live like contrary to what i was just saying like it gets hella hot but yeah bro i can't oh. stand the heat i can't stand it i'm in georgia so it gets pretty hot but um i've been to other places where it's cool and like i i fucking love it bro i hate the heat yeah but, it gets it gets like really really fucking hot in my city and like the, i mean bro it's a it's called the valley of california like it's a valley yeah, bro, so bro. The heat just fucking mm-hmm. just, like rises where i live it gets in like the hundreds bro yeah bro i feel so that fuck, I feel so yeah that. generally speaking bro generally speaking yeah i feel like i'm a cold weather person bro because i feel like this last week bro it's been like it's been like almost 80 degrees bro and it's kind of fucked like it's just yeah bro hot bro um what's it called global warming type shit <laughs> yeah dude nah. i think about that a lot I think about that a lot it's actually very like scary things are happening Am I lagging? because i just moved into this new place ass but i talked to the dude who owns the place and he set me up with a new wi-fi so we're straight but um yeah i was really worried bro yeah um no, but yeah, let, no, it's straight. Let's start the interview, bro. Let's start it, bro. People want to know who Diego in the Dark is, so let's start it. Um, good. I'm here. yeah, bro. So where did you grow up? I grew up in a city called Stockton, California. I was born here. I was raised here. I still live here. Uh, it's a shithole, but uh, it's on the map. People know about it. People in California know about it. It's recognized as just hella ghetto and just hella. Just a shithole basically but there's a lot of music here and there's actually like contrary to like its reputation there, are, there is like a couple of, like cool things about stockton but nothing to do here it's just a city you pass through there's nothing to see nothing to do really um but yeah i grew up here and uh yeah i was born into a middle class family never like had it pretty good most of my life other than like like mental and emotional health Cause I'm not saying that like, oh yeah, like growing up with money constitutes being happy. Generally speaking, maybe it does, but I think regardless of your financial situation as a child and like what you're born into, like you could still have a fucked up life, you know? But Bro, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. born here and uh, it's pretty cool. No, yeah, I feel, <laughs> cool. no I, feel, I feel that heavily, bro, because I was also middle class. Um, tell me about what it's like there. I mean, because... Like you said, people know about it or whatever, but tell me about what it's what it's really like, you know what I mean? It's uh, hella dangerous. I already said that, but I have to like, add some emphasis to that. It's really dangerous. <sighs> then, like, I've never been robbed, but I've been chased like four times, bro. I got chased like last month. Um, So it's fucked, bro. It's pretty fucked here. I don't really feel safe here, like even going outside at night, which sucks, bro, because I love to get out. Like, I love to walk and shit. Like, I i do like a lot of like i don't want to say cardio but i get out bro like i exercise and shit so like it's hard to get out of the house bro like after hours bro because it's, it's fuck bro it's hella dangerous but other than that there's really there's really nothing about stockton that is is cool it's just hella dangerous it's hella flat it's really hot the heat is like racist bro it's actually hot as fuck uh and in the winter it gets hella cold i don't know bro there's nothing here uh, the only benefit is you're kind of by the Bay Area, and uh, a lot of motherfuckers from Stockton are trying to say that Stockton is a part of the Bay Area, but that shit's not a part of the Bay Area. This shit's the Valley. But yeah, I don't know. Generally speaking, everything in 209, like in this area code, is is just butt, bro. It fucking sucks. I'm sorry, also. <laughs> nah, nah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but that's that's Stockton. Um, I don't know, bro. I went to school here. Um. And I had a friend group here of mutual, like just mutuals and shit, like as a high school and, you know, we grew apart. I started pursuing music. I met my homie Mark. Me and him got really close. And over time, like 
the universe gave me a mark, like a friend group of people in, in the Bay. And now my fr friends are comprised of people in the Bay Area. So. Yeah, bro, Mark Space cool. is cool. Mark Space is cool. You, bro, because that's what people want to know about. Um. Of course. So, how would you describe yourself? I don't know. Um. Maybe it's just because I have like really short fucking uh, attention span right now, but I can't think of words to describe myself. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like. I can't do this without seeming egocentric or like like I'm just stroking my own ego. You're straight, you know? <laughs> bro. No, it's straight. It's straight. I don't know. I it's think straight, I think bro. I think uh, generally speaking, I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. I just I'm a creative. I make music, and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a pretty good person. No, that's perfect, bro. But that's up for people. That's up for people to interpret. Because mm -hmm. bro, it's just the internet. I could be terrible and no one yeah, have any idea. Of course, <laughs> but I feel like I'm a pretty good person. The sure. fact that you leave it up for interpretation means it's good, bro. It's good, but let's keep going. I mean, this is a whole interview, bro. Like we're gonna get into a lot of shit. Um, of course. <clears throat> so when did you start making music? Okay, so I was saying earlier how I was born into like a middle to upper class family. My parents. Mm -hmm. Are my mom's white and my dad's Hispanic, uh, so I'm mixed. But mm. my parents are both like semi-religious. They were always like, say they still are very faithful in God and like toward Christianity and shit. But like we never went to church or anything. Like they never, they were good about enforcing religion in their kids' lives. Like they didn't shove it down our throats. You know, like they didn't, they didn't do any of that shit. They just were like, we ask that you guys believe in God. Like read the Bible if you feel like it. Like, and I would pray growing up and shit. But besides the point. My parents, because they were like that, and they kind of had this, um, like, they had this, uh, I would say, like, what's the word? Like, they, they always had a proclivity to, like, push me away from rap. Like, it, it was actually something that was, like, deliberately sheltered from me as a kid. Like, my, my parents were like, you can't listen to rap. Uh, it's vulgar. Like, it's bad. Like, it doesn't condone good behavior. Like, and that's just how, like, old, my parents are also old as fuck, mind you. My parents are both in their 60s. So, like, that's just mm -hmm. how people from, like, that generation interpret rap music. Because low-key, yeah, like, course. the shit they did grow up around, like, I mean, low-key, it was kind of bad. And they both grew up yeah. in California. Yeah. And California is, like, not necessarily known for having, like, we're not like the East Coast, bro. Like, we didn't have motherfuckers, like, I don't know, bro. Whatever. I'm no, you're straight. You're straight. Yeah. yeah. I no, wasn't I feel able that. to even listen to this genre of music growing up. Like, my parents mm -hmm. didn't even want me listening or hearing or, like, you know, consuming any of this shit. Um, now my older brother who completely changed like completely like rewrote the story like completely changed the narrative uh, We're eight years apart. This is like my best friend, bro. His, his name's Armand. He's like my, my best fucking friend bro. I love this fool mm -hmm. literally would mm -hmm. fucking die for this fool, bro. Hell yeah mm -hmm. On everything. I love this fool, bro. Mm -hmm. my best friend mm -hmm. He like I guess we're eight years apart. So when I was nine, he got his license, bro. He was like 16 17 mm -hmm. and this fool was tasked with taking me everywhere with him. You know, that's how like older siblings are oh you gotta drive somewhere your mom would be like okay you have to take your brother with you so i'd go with him everywhere and this fool didn't mind bro because we've had like a good relationship our entire life too you know that's always mm -hmm. been the boy yeah, yeah so you know he get on ox bro and he play like waka flocka bro you put on like uh kendrick lamar and like mm -hmm. bro like everyone from young money he showed me like young thug like he put me on to uh chief keith bro like a lot of, of like Chirac artists bro mm -hmm. like uh i don't know and i was just like holy fuck like i've, I've literally been like you know kept away from this shit my whole life and mm -hmm. it's my favorite genre of music like i love this yeah shit, bro. And yeah. At that point, bro i also um forgot to mention this i was kind of born into music like since i was a kid bro i wanted to be a singer like i always wanted to pursue music since i was born mm -hmm. bro. like i used to uh go in my living room bro and like my parents would put on like maroon five or some shit or like justin timberlake and i'd grab a whisk like a mixing whisk and i'd literally sing with it like it was a microphone in front yeah of, like my parents and shit bro so i've always mm -hmm. loved music but like what really solidified that like being my life was when my brother basically was like fuck what mom and dad are saying like just do what you want like they can only control you for so long like and after that bro like i just i got my first iphone when i turned 10 i got an iphone 5c and i had access to the internet on a phone bro and i had like soundcloud and shit that's another thing bro my brother also didn't put me on a spotify he put me on a soundcloud bro he put me on apple music he put me on any of that shit he maybe download soundcloud and of that course. also was like very very integral for like where i am today you feel me because yeah supposed to sound yeah bad. and youtube helped a lot too because i found like a starry i found gravity boys or Drang gang mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. found 
found Sesh, bro. I found Oliver Francis. I found Six Dogs. I found all these artists when I was like 11 years old, bro. And that mm. shit, like, only did rap change me, but underground rap at that point in time, like 2015, 2016, underground rap, like that. I was like, holy shit. Because, bro, at that point, I was seeing other like white rappers doing this shit. And that's when mm -hmm. I was like, yo, mm -hmm. like, I could really do this. Like, there's there really is like marketability behind this. And like, mm hmm. And it never was about marketability or success, bro. I just love music. You feel me? Yeah. It, yeah. Seeing that really like gave me that spark of hope. I was like, okay, like there's other artists mm -hmm. that are doing this shit like me. Like I'm finna do this shit. So yeah, bro. Um, basically to answer your question, when I turned 13, I fucking was like, I want to get a microphone for my birthday. That's the only thing I asked for was a blue Yeti and I got it. <laughs> and I went home and that same night after my birthday, I fucking downloaded Audacity. Yeah, downloaded Audacity and recorded my first song. Um, I didn't even know how to download beats. I don't know like why I didn't understand how to use like MP3 downloaders, but I didn't even know how to download beats. So I got a speaker, like a Bluetooth speaker, and I played the beat, beat into the mic using the speaker. <laughs> so like the audio was hella compressed and like hella distorted. <laughs> and I just recorded over that shit and... Uh, yeah that's, that's how i started making music bro uh and i was always diego in the dark before i even like made my soundcloud page i was always diego in the dark bro so the story about my name um I'm, I'm just assuming you're gonna ask that like after this shit um i had this homie growing up named joseph bro i was like my best friend in elementary school and uh that fool as like an 11 year old was also believe it or not like he was with the shit bro like that fool knew about like fat nick he was hella into poya he was hella into peep and x bro and like we were like sixth graders bro so like that fool was the only like only other motherfucker in my class who was like who like this was a motherfucker was saucy bro like he knew what he was he just had swag bro so we got in like a fucking elementary school argument and we weren't friends for like a week and like we both changed our ads to like some edgy shit and i made mine diego in the dark and i just i never changed it it just stuck it just stuck bro like I went back to school, bro, after that weekend and everyone was calling me that and leading into middle school when I entered seventh grade, everyone called me that everyone knew me as that in my city. Uh, and then I started making music under that name a year later. It was only a year later. I started making music under that name and I just I never changed it. I never thought about changing it. I just grew comfortable with it. Um, and yeah, I've been Diego in the dark since the dawn of time. Wait, I'm sorry, brother. I can't hear you. Wait, no, like, I actually can't hear your audio at all. Might be me, but I, like, I cannot hear you. Wait, let me actually try to play audio so I can make sure my fucking computer isn't killing itself. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, you're really quiet. You're, you're hella faint. You're good, you're good. Yo. What's good? I can hear you again. Yo, my fucking mic unplugged. <laughs> I don't even know yeah, how. Yeah. <laughs> bro, and I was, the yeah, whole time yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, yeah. No, I was able to hear you uh, like right up until the point you started talking. I like literally heard like white noise in your room and shit. Like it was perfectly fine. Yeah, I don't well, know what happened. I have no idea what happened, but uh. Nah, um. Okay. Yeah, I was just elaborating on how I got my name, and I explained to you how I started making music. Yeah, so I'll, what I was gonna say is, like, Diego in the Dark is really cool. How did you get Diego? It's my first name. It's, it's your my, first name? my legal first name. That's my go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fucking sick, dude. Diego in the Dark. Yeah. There, there was an alias before this that was it was just uh it was literally spooky diego bro, and it was inspired by spooky black Eric yeah Corbin. yeah bro. and that was my spooky. name before that yeah, for like bro. for like six months <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. happy i didn't keep that shit i'm happy i changed it <laughs> yeah but spooky black is fucking sick dude 
Um, very talented position. Definitely, definitely, yeah. He he was around during that like 2014, 15 age where it was like young lean coming up and all that. Yeah, bro, I really Why fucked with him. Don't don't recognize that he's an underground legend. Yeah, high key. Bro. High key. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, there's a lot okay. of artists. Yeah, so I got hella questions. <laughs> We've no. only got select like, three questions. Me. No, you're straight. Bro. No, you're good. Throw them at me. Um, so, um, how has your music uh progressed? So, like, what what did it start at, and how has it progressed? Um, I was very stagnant for a long time. Um, I have really bad ADHD. So when I look at something that I, my brain just assumes that it's complicated, you know, like I immediately make the inference that, oh, this is really hard. At least at the time, like as a young teenager, like I was like, I don't want to learn this shit. So I didn't learn FL for a long fucking time. Like I was making music on Audacity unmixed for like three years, bro. I'm not even joking. So I was stagnant. Obviously, I wouldn't say fully stagnant because in that, in that time, like I was listening to a lot of music. I was finding new artists. I was growing as a as a as a yeah. like as a kid bro so i was like mm. learning what inspired me i was getting better at writing lyrics i was getting better at like uh maintaining cadences and like getting better yeah. at like having like a consistent flow over like beats and shit um but in 2021 bro i went into like really big debt i'm not gonna say about what maybe i will say what it is but i went into really big debt uh like almost three grand and at the time i was 16 mind you so that was a lot of money for me that was it was really scary and i had people who were like i'm gonna fucking flashbang your window if you don't have my money to me by like, x date you know like i had people threatening to swap me like it was fucking scary um nothing happened but it, it still was a lot of pressure bro and like i couldn't sleep i was all the paranoid i was like what do i do bro so i like took that chaotic ass energy and i finally sat down and i learned how to fucking use fl studio i watched like this video on it was just a preset tutorial and i just like copied the preset um I didn't download the preset i copied it which was also like really good because it helped me like learn how to like use chains like effect chains very early on so just a small ass detail but yeah 2021 that's when i started like learning how to use fl and uh, i learned quick i learned like i learned in like probably a day damn near and that same day bro i like recorded my first song with a with the preset and i heard my vocals and i was like holy shit like this is crazy and like it, it completely like um What's the word, bro? I don't know. Like, it, it just fully, like, reinstated that, like, drive to make music. And I, like, was recording. I was recording, like, three songs a day, bro. Oh, my God. Like, I was making... Once I learned FL, I was making so much music, bro. And uh, at that point, I deleted... Not deleted, but I archived my old SoundCloud account because it was cooked. I made a new one that was also under Diego in the Dark. I just swapped the URLs, and I started posting music there. And that account is the account I have to this day. And I've been on that account since April of 2021 so cool. yeah Damn, yeah so, um, so... and ever since then i've just been like learning more mixing and shit i've like made my own mix i got, I, I feel like i know fl studio pretty well um and i feel like on an engineering level i'm pretty good so so how would you describe your music when you first started making it whereas how would you describe it now i think if you heard my i mean i don't i try to keep that shit away people mm -hmm. i think once i get to a point where i'm big enough like people will like hack my old soundcloud or find a way to leak my old music or do some shit i actually did put out some of my my old old songs from like 2017 mm -hmm. um but if you heard that music you understand like there's a clear connection like it's not too big of a far cry from the music i make now it is a lot because it's, it's not even i wouldn't say it's not uh not comparable but because that's my point it is comparable but it's very different uh quality wise and just sound wise and shit but I don't know you yeah, yeah. you definitely like if you heard it back then bro and you heard my music now you'd understand how like i went yeah. down the path that i did as far as like the sound of my music and shit yeah no that's cool that's cool how it can progress like that um so to develop on that how would you describe your music now how would you describe it what is um, the um feeling behind it i think this is a question that i need to get better at answering because it's something that i get asked a lot and i never really mm -hmm. know how to generate generate a response yeah. um but i feel like it's just very experimental and i feel like uh as far as like lyrical potency it's just very um not potency but like material wise like it's just very um 
very emotional for me like music always yeah. been like an emotional release for me and like i'll make a song that has no fucking meaning that like, has nothing tied to it no sentimental like value lyrically mm-hmm. it's just a, a fucking you know like fuck it like just a fun song mm-hmm. but for the most part like i usually write lyrics about like my emotional state and like shit i'm going through or how i feel about you know a certain subject or just life like retrospectively so mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's very emotional and i feel like a lot of people um uh, really seem to resonate with that and a lot of people agree that my music is a very emotional thing for them and for myself so yeah i would say it's just experimental it's very emotional uh i feel like i'm pretty in tune with my emotions which is why it's like easy for me to to compute music like this mm-hmm. so yeah okay. that's, that's two words i would use to describe it mm-hmm. so i'm glad you said that because we're gonna get deeper into that but um before we get to there we got a lot more questions um so who influenced you who influenced your music growing up and now if uh, anyone, i mentioned a couple if of anyone. anyone oh of course of course it, like influence and inspiration is literally what spawns new musicians because mm-hmm. without without being inspired bro like it's I mean, without being inspired bro it's hard to do anything with yourself you know of course it's, mm-hmm. it's always been within hum- human nature you know like mm-hmm. since cavemen days bro like yeah. building fires and shit like it's just you learn from other people and you see other people do things and you're like oh fuck like that's cool i want to get like that so for me my biggest influence of all time is this artist named oliver francis um you may or may not know who that is he's another like he's a white rapper he's from like the era of, like the 2014 2015 era of like soundcloud rap um hella inspires me to this day to this day still a huge influence bro still like my favorite favorite rapper for sure and then like once i like had discovered like the hyper pop scene in like 2019 and shit and like once that started happening that was crazy because not only was it like a lot of artists of like i don't know why i keep making this about race it's not about that but like it was really cool because there was a lot of there was a lot of artists who were uh younger like very much younger like bro Mm -hmm. like like to give you some examples, like Kuru, Curtains, uh, mm-hmm. Osquin, like yeah, yeah, uh, like even like Lou, like they were all like 13, 14, 15, mm-hmm. making yeah, music yeah. like this, and that shit of was course. good, bro. Like that shit yeah, was fire. Yeah. I saw that, and that was what really inspired me to learn how to use FL two because that just also happened to be at the same time that I was like in debt damn near no i wasn't in debt this is when i was getting into debt this is when i was fucking up my back but but that's what really inspired me too bro so one artist from that scene probably the only artist from that scene that really inspired me was ketamine his his, his name is ketamine with two k's it's k ketamine and he's like like oliver francis to me damn near like oh, that fool has like no him. image yeah he has like no image bro he was he has like two photos of like him on the internet because like mm-hmm. he never really like put himself out there but like I don't know like his music is just hard what's like, that so is it in the scope oh in my sights in my sights yeah bro I yeah in my sights. that song changed me bro yeah, yeah i love yeah. that song mm-hmm. i love that song okay. I, I love like i love that era of music too it's very special mm-hmm. to me a yeah. lot of people hate that shit, but it's very special to me um i understand the hate because like some of the artists there were like loki cooked like the like hella like mm-hmm. the vocal stutter shit and like all like the chops and shit and like that mm-hmm. digicore ass sound like loki was very redundant yeah, yeah. and it got mm-hmm. it got cooked really fast it really mm-hmm. got saturated really quickly but there was a lot of artists from that scene that actually were hella fire mm-hmm. um that made like a more mature like a diff- that like gave you a different like package of music to me mm-hmm. uh and i feel like ketamine was like one of the only artists from that scene that like really like i was like damn like this fool's fire and then another artist is a uh, one more is probably trip 5k you may or may not know who that is either he also is like very adjacent to like ketamine in the sense that like he had like no real image he had like one social media that was instagram then he deleted his instagram he only had like a soundcloud page and he would just post music on soundcloud and now he quit mm-hmm. he doesn't make music either but he also mm-hmm. was like if you listen to all three of those artists right after this interview whoever's watching just all three of them like you'll understand say the artist one time for the viewers Oliver Francis, but like Oliver Francis from like 2015, no, like 2014, 2015, 2016. Everything after 2017, not so much, but like old Oliver Francis, uh, K Ketamine or Ketamine and Trip 5K. Cool. Those artists. Hell yeah. yeah. If you listen to uh, those because you'll understand like how I get the influence. Yeah, bro. So, um, 
The next thing I really want to talk about is your music videos, bro, because you've been putting them out very consistently. So tell me about the process. Tell me about what you're trying to convey and all that. Um, I got really blessed um, with my videographer. It's really hard, like in this day and age, to like find someone who wants to work like crazy without like just charging you with the fee. And my videographer, bro, like not to like fucking TMI and like breach his his fucking um, privacy, but this fool's like basically investing in me, pretty much. So, and he also just, bro, this fool like my videographer. Okay, so his name his name's Christ GV. Um, shout out to Christ. This fool, he gave me my first show, bro. He lives in Sacramento and he hosts this event called Napalm. He gave me my first show. I like, yeah, I performed for the first time ever at his house. And after that, me and him were like pretty good friends. And I had learned that he was a videographer, but initially he was trying to charge me for videos. And I never even like reached out to him for that shit. He actually reached out to me and he was like, yo, I fuck with the music. Like, here's my rate if you want to do music videos. Like, this is what I charge. I'm like, yeah, that's dope. Fuck that. I'm not paying, <laughs> paying for a video though. I'm sorry. And then like two months later, I don't know what, what happened, bro, but he just was in my VC in my old server and he was like, or no, my current server. And he was like, bro, fuck it. Like, you want to just pull up this weekend, bro, and just film a video? Like, fuck it. We could film like three videos. And I was like, vet. At that point, like me and him were just collaborating. We were just working. And that solidified me and him being like in collaboration. And I had a videographer. I just didn't really realize it yet. Um. Now, another thing I got to touch upon is me and Mark. I know you said this is about me, but this is very very important to like my own story mm -hmm. so me and mark have had multiple points in our friendship where we've fallen out and i love that fool that's like my like damn near like my blood brother bro. i love that fool mm -hmm. so much um but we've had periods where we weren't friends i wouldn't say we didn't not like we didn't not care about each other you, you feel me or like we didn't you know what i'm saying bro i'm having a stroke yeah, we yeah, always yeah, cared yeah. about each other no matter what mm -hmm. our terms were like if mm -hmm. he hit me up and like yo i'm mm -hmm. homeless i need a place to stay i yeah, let yeah. that fool fucking come like bum with me you feel me like i don't care mm -hmm. i love that fool always even if we weren't getting along but me and him weren't on good terms and like a week after i had locked in with my videographer me and mark became good friends again mark saw the videos he's like what are you doing make a group chat right now like with this fool like we're gonna create a business triangle right now and we did that a week later um this is also insane bro because like everything fell into place like the like the universe really like just spoke to us bro like mm. i don't know bro like it's it's crazy bro the world works in really weird ways um and this shit still is beyond me so that same month mark had moved into san francisco um which is just crazy bro because san francisco bro it's a network it's a huge city bro it's like la you know like there's a lot of shit there it's a very big city um so that was also crazy bro so we had like all locked in we made a group and we just linked up one weekend and we filmed a bunch of videos and we were just in sf and we had hella fun bro like it was hella cool bro and that's how we made that like triangle and it was just me mark and our videographer and ever since then bro like we've just been like we, we formed a group bro and i've just been locking in with like videos with this fool like every other week like that fool we link up and i'm very conscientious of like his work ethic and i always make sure that i'm not like no one's being overworked but that fool is legitimately just like he just loves to film he he loves he loves shooting videos like i love making music which is insane like for some reason it's, it's hard for me to like like on a conceptual level it's hard for me to grasp someone else like loving uh like art form and like a, a talent like i do and like musicians do mm -hmm. but not for music like for videography it's hella cool and this fool just loves to film bro so you know it's just i'm blessed bro i have someone who just who's hella talented who has a crazy camera and we both like have very similar um creative I wouldn't say ideals but we have creative processes you feel me mm. he's also he's also into the same shit i'm into you feel me so i don't know bro i'm blessed i'm blessed as fuck to to have you know that fool in my life he's also you know without considering business he's just a good friend of mine bro he's like one of my best friends and i love that fool so yeah that's that's how i got that videographer and that's how i'm able to to release videos at such a consistent uh rate mm -hmm. um and like i said we have very similar like creative uh mindsets and like we have very similar like processes with like what we find cool so like this will look for spots to film at i see it i'm like bet and i'll add to it we'll like open a google doc we'll like write down shit and sometimes you won't even have a cohesive video sometimes we'll just link up bro and we'll just go somewhere just bum it you know from a video mm -hmm. so yeah it was, bro, it was I, cool bro 
Yeah, bro. I it's watched like, um, my first video that I watched of you was uh, let me let me check right quick just so I can tell you it, it was uh, S H L D V. Should have known. Should have known. Yeah, bro. That shit was known. sick. And and um, after I found that, it was like just video after video, and and um. I was like, wow, this dude is really on the come up. Like, this is crazy. Video after video with Hello Plays. Um, and then I saw my Sp MySpace Mark, and he was cool as fuck, too. So, so I, uh, yeah, bro, I really fuck with him, too. Uh, that's my but, that's my best friend, bro. That's my twin. Yeah, bro. But the whole universe thing, we're going to get more into that a little bit later. Um Bet. That's good. But, yeah, bro. So, um, have you done shows... And what are you looking forward to in regards to shows? I think shows are fun as fuck. Um, I don't know. Right now, it's very habitual for me to get on stage. And I, like, scream. I, like, auto-tune scream, and it's hella fun. And then halfway to my set, I, like, strain my voice hella bad, and I lose my voice. So, like, I kind of crash out. But I love bringing that energy regardless, bro. Like, I just... just some rock star shit, bro. I love getting on stage and just having fun like that it's just very surreal um experience bro the adrenaline's just you know unparalleled to any other feeling you feel me it's mm -hmm. just, it's a crazy eye you get when you get on stage um yeah. right now for shows i might start charging to perform mm -hmm. uh actually maybe because at the same time bro a show is an opportunity and like i don't want to give a rate for performing like i like to i like to do shows but like if someone wants to hypothetically bring me out to la again I might have to like charge a little bit of money because like it's gas money that I'm paying. I'm also paying for food and food in California is fucking expensive. It's like $80 worth of gas just to get there. And, and a flight, it's, it's still like a flight's like $100. That's still money. I mean, and like I said, plus food, which is expensive and like a hotel and a place to stay. It costs money. So I might charge for some shit like that. But like local shows, I'll always do that shit for, for the F. I'll always do that shit for free because I like performing and like I always will support that shit. Um, but as far as that, I, th I think I'm going to, I don't know. I don't really have a crazy opinion on shows. I just like performing right now. I want to open for bigger audiences. Uh, and yeah, I just want to get like bigger crowds. And I know with time, like I'll be able to, to gather more people. California just doesn't really have a scene. Like the, the audiences in California are kind of fucked. I hate to say it, but like a lot of my listeners don't, are not derived from California. They're from like Russia. That's like the second yeah, yeah. almost biggest country shout out mm -hmm. to russia bro i love russia yeah, bro. um and like other states like like canada canada is not a state but i was gonna say other states in america but canada is another one it's another big country mm -hmm. the uk uh germany is also like a really big like listening base for me but like in the u.s bro like as far as states it's like uh washington atlanta new york and california is like like third which is like like third or fourth which is kind of fucked because i'm from here you know i would ideally mm -hmm. i'd like it to be number one but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna just wait, bro. And I know with time, like a year from now, I'll be able to for like 300, 400 people. And that's what I'm looking yeah. forward to having a crazy audience. Mm -hmm. So I could just really like, you know, uh, manipulate that crowd. You feel me? And just have hella fun. It'd be crazy. Because my last show, there was only like, only like 70 people. It was a very, very, very small event. You know, it was very, very underground, very local. There wasn't that many people. And, uh, Never will a small crowd uh, disincentivize me from performing, ever. Because people are still paying to see me. People are still tr like making an effort to come travel to see me. Like yeah. people were driving yeah. from hella far to LA to see me perform. Like I said, there was only so many people at that venue. Um, only sold so many tickets. So I still appreciate it, no matter what the size of the, you know, how many tickets are sold or how many people go. I don't care. You know, three people could show up to see me, and I'd still fucking put on a show because. You know, like I love my fucking listeners. I love my supporters. But like I said, ideally, I really look forward to opening up to bigger crowds. And I know that it's going to happen because I'm going to be fucking very successful. Yeah, bro. So. Yeah, I can't wait to see where the shows go. Um, and uh, the next question is pretty big. And um, it's uh, why do you make music? And I know you earlier you were talking about a lot of people ask you this and everything. Um, so I want to give you some time to think about it, and at the same time, I really got to piss. So so take some time, 
think about it, why do you make music? Um, and I'll be back in literally like 30 seconds. No, you're good. Take your time. But really think about it because a lot of people are going to watch this. A lot of people are going to want to know why you make music. So think about it. It's good. Of course. Yeah. All right, chat. I can't see chat. I'm not reading chat, but um, I think I already gave a pretty solid answer earlier on why I like to make music. It's all a rap has always been just hella inspiring for me. Um, so yeah, I just love making music. I love rap. Um, and it's also just a, re a release. It's a huge release for me. You know, like when I have like emotional baggage, or I have weight on my shoulders. It helps. It's very therapeutic. But honestly, at the end of the day, at the not end of the day, but at the same time, like it's not even about oh, like emotional release. It's therapeutic. It's good for my mental health. Like it's not even about that. I like making music because it's fucking fun too. You make a really good song. It's like very adjacent to performing. You know, like you make a, a really good song, you get this this like dopamine release that's just like crazy you know like just feels hella good you're like holy fuck i just made this you feel me it's like it's like any other any other art form you feel me like you are a painter and you draw a crazy stencil and you make a crazy painting and you're looking at that painting and you hang it up on your wall or you put it in a museum and you're like holy shit like this is crazy and then other people are visiting that museum and they're looking at your artwork and they're like yo this is really fucking cool it's like same shit with music. I mean, that's honestly a really stupid comparison because it's it's literally the same fucking shit. Damn near, like it's it's you know like it's it's, just, it's very comparable. Um, not even in the sense that it's just art, but yeah, I don't know. It just feels good and like seeing other people um, resonate with my work and DM me and say like they love my music and that like it saved them or like it helped them like get out of a certain point in their life or like even shit like I just I love your music. You feel me? Like I turn up to your music, etc feels really good you know it makes me happy i've always been like kind of a, a people pleaser i guess like i like making other people happy i like doing things for other people like it's like almost like a love language for me you feel me like gift giving in a sense so mm -hmm. being able to help people through something as sentimental and important to me as music is just it's just so meaningful bro and i, I just mm -hmm. i love it i love i love music and i also um not even about like being arrogant i know i have a talent i know that i'm good at this shit. so also just being skilled at something like this is just cool so i don't know i like exercising that too like you're good at something you know you're good at it and you can make a career off of it it's like fuck it run with it until the wheels fall off you know if that ever happens so yeah bro. i don't know one thing you made me think about that i've been thinking about a lot that i've always thought about is um you know in the past it was hard for the average person to create art and for people to hear it but at the point we are right now especially in 2024 it's like anybody can make art and because of that a lot of people make bad art but at the same time it's like people can make this beautiful art and people can hear it so it's like you, you know people in the past it would be like you'd have like machiavelli's you'd have like da vinci's but you wouldn't have like that person living by themselves and like creating and and it's beautiful now that someone like Diego in the dark can put themselves out there and really create something beautiful. I love that, bro. I love that. Thank I love you. that. I really there's, it. Yeah, bro. I love that there's a platform nowadays. Um Yeah, of course. It's really easy to put yourself out there. But mm -hmm. I think that ease of access, like you said earlier, has also um, kind of created this normalization that anyone can make music and anyone can do mm -hmm. it, which I fully support, you know, like, yeah, yeah, get get in touch with your like creative side. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. being being a creative is great. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. fuck the government, you know, like fuck the nine to five <laughs> complex, yeah, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. go get successful, get your bag off of doing shit that doesn't consist of working a desk job or being enslaved by like the government, you know, like fuck mm -hmm. that. Um, but at the same time like music everyone wants to say oh music is art like it's subjective like it's it is what you make it that's bullshit music is a uh it's very objective and it is a skill you can be bad at making music you hear a right. song looks like this is bad mm -hmm. this is shit music at the end of the day it doesn't even matter because bro you can make bad music and have a crazy image and have insane retention just because you're like personable and mm -hmm. people can fuck with you or like if you're a meme 
you feel me like mm-hmm. i'm not gonna say who or names because that's just bad but like there's a lot of artists even in my scene that make pretty lukewarm underwhelming not that good like very low effort music who yeah. are very popular mm-hmm. uh, and i see that and i say this in like the least disrespectful way ever like i feel like people could be doing better and i know that i could do better than that so i'm just like i have infinite potential regardless of that i have infinite potential but like that's also a motivator because people kind of the underground scene and music in general is kind of washed right now honestly it's pretty fucking pretty washed you know it's mm-hmm. not in the best state right now um so but there's also a lot of cool shit happening in the scene but i don't know i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm i don't know what else i have to add to that mm-hmm. i just think uh yeah music is very very much a skill as well it's not just a talent it's not just an art form and it's not it doesn't boil down to a subject it's very mm-hmm. very objective you yeah. can be bad at making music you can be mm-hmm. a generational talent and be incredibly skilled at making music it's, it's not just talent actually it's, it's skill there is time you can put into it you feel me so yeah, yeah i definitely agree with you on that mm-hmm. i think the main point I, I was trying to i was trying to um point at was like like people like you who make this great music are able to really put themselves out there and it's beautiful that people like you can truly you know show people what you're made of um but okay let's move on to the next question um the next question has two parts so the main question is who do you want your music to reach but there's two parts to that question so what type of people do you want that music to reach as well as how many people do you want your music to reach uh europeans and mostly uh eastern europe because the um industry i guess there is very 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 healthy and the like foundation and like the soil uh, of like listeners there are, are like the best like bro those the people from like eastern europe like eastern european countries are very very nice like the most support i get not uh including america is fully from like like i said earlier like russia uh ukraine um germany uh, like bro i could honestly name more countries i'm just fried like i'm, I'm sorry i'm just really no, fucking fried <laughs> um but yeah generally speaking i want to target europe and uh i don't know i, I want to move to europe too because i don't i don't know i, I love america I, i'm not gonna sit here and, and like shit on america but like i don't know i feel like the quality of life there is is better people if anyone in chat is like hella smart i might get cooked someone might try to cook me for that because i could be wrong but i feel like i don't know i feel like saying this in like an educated way like i feel like the quality of life there is better um and america is just kind of cooked and i don't really know if i want to live here like when i get my bag right like when i'm making like millions of dollars like i want to go to europe and just buy like a lot of property and live somewhere beautiful and start a family in my late 20s and be hella successful still and that's what i want to do bro like i don't know bro i love european people hella shout out to europe and uh that's another thing bro if i fall off in america which is very very probable i don't want to fall off ever that's not a part of the program like that's ideally falling off is like the worst uh like worst case scenario ever right but if i have or if anyone has a huge following in a different part of the world and you fall off in america you only fell off here you still have millions of listeners in europe or millions of listeners in uh uh south america or central america it's like little pump little pump no one talks about little pump you know you don't hear about little pump anymore not here at least americans don't give a fuck about little pump but little pump goes to mexico or he goes to spain or brazil he opens up for like 2,000 people. You feel me? I want to be able to do that. If I fall off in America, I still can go to fucking Moscow or Berlin and open up for like a 1,000 people in a huge venue. You feel me? And like have that sustainability in a different part of the world. I feel like a lot of artists don't think about that. And I think long term, it'd be really, really good. And uh, the love that I've received from people in Europe and just in other continents, even in Asia, has just been, it's been perpetual, bro. And it has been just unconditional amounts of support from people who are from Europe. And uh, yeah, ideally, that is like my target audience, and that's why, that's my target audience. 
Yeah, bro. I don't think a lot of people think about that, and that's great that but, you think about that. Of course, bro. I appreciate that. And obviously, shot. Shout out America too, bro. Because well, Americans be showing love, bro. It's it's my fucking home. Mm -hmm. Love America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. Shout out America. Um. Okay. So the next question is kind of. Uh, it's kind of deep, but um. What do you try to convey through your music? What emotions do you try to convey? What um, feelings do you try to convey? What thoughts do you try to convey? Um, I am... Let's see. Let me think. Mm -hmm. This is probably the most difficult question to answer because I, no, there's a lot good. of ways I can go about this. You're and good. I don't want to um, fail yeah. to convey this. Yeah, yeah. Um. Because so I want to be articulate and I want to be on point about this. Um, mm -hmm. I think as far as uh, talking about substances and, and drugs, like it's, it's very popularized in, in music today as well, like rapping about drug abuse. And uh, it would be hypocrisy for me to sit here and be like, I don't like that shit. But me rapping about substances and, and drug abuse in my music is like, kind of like doomsday kind of shit it's not saying go do drugs like i don't ever condone that shit i hate fucking drugs bro i was when i was 15 bro i was addicted to xanax and i almost died I almost almost died taking hydros and xanax bro um and ever since then i've been clean that's another thing too that i want to talk about i'm sober a lot of motherfuckers think i might be just doing crazy drugs because what it's all i rap about no i have a, i have a history with uh substance abuse and with drugs but i don't do drugs now i don't even smoke weed like that really so yeah I'm I'm clean, bro. I'm sober to the bone. Um, but as far as is is talking about drugs, bro, like me doing that shit is like from personal experience, and it's just like sometimes maybe it doesn't seem that way, and sometimes maybe it's not. You know, maybe it's a little unconscious, and I am just rapping about like drugs, which is something I want to stop. I want to refrain from doing that because there's so much more substance you can add to your music. Like I want to kind of grow away from that, and if I am gonna rap about that shit, like I want to do it in a way that is like uh, construed. You know where it's like don't do this like you're like this is my story like kind of crash out type shit like this is me crashing out don't do this shit like i you know everyone watching this shit like i do not ever uh promote that promote that behavior at all whatsoever not even to be like pr or like business model like that's just me being a person i mean that's this is this is the whole interview this is me being a person but i'll never be like business or like pr or any of that shit. that's all bullshit i hate the hollywood shit but I don't ever condone that behavior. I just want to clarify that. And then as far as like um, music, I already, I don't want to say generally because I'm already just talking about like all the facets of my music, but like it's very emotional. Like I said earlier, um, I'm also just hella like, it's kind of corny. I don't know why this just comes off as corny, but like I'm hella grungy. Like I'm definitely a weird motherfucker, bro. Like I rap about like very like vulgar shit too not even just drugs and like vul not vulgarity in the sense that i'm just swearing but it's also just like, uh, like bro, i rap about like like death and like suicide and, and like the way i do it is in a very very like uh articulate way and like for some people it might not be very digestible it might even be like uh, a reason for people to not want to listen to my music because it's it's kind of a i guess like rated r type shit you feel me um there's a, a, probably a way better way I could put it. There's probably a word I could have used, but you get my point. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely, the way I rap about, like, shit like that is definitely, like, very, 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 very in-depth and very articulate and uh, very specific. Uh, and I've had people who have literally, like, told me, and, like, I, I love, like, I fuck with you as a person, but I, like, lately, like, I don't want to listen to your music because you talk about, like, suicide and you talk about shit that, like, kind of is, like, it just triggers, like, PTSD for me. And I hear that and I'm like, fuck, like, I'm sorry. And I got to be careful with the way I wear this because I don't ever like want to do that to anyone ever. But I also like, in a way, like it made me fucking think like I'm able to get into that person's like brain like that in, in the least malicious way possible. Like that's what I want my music to do. I kind of want my music to make people feel weird. I mean, look at, you look at my aesthetic on like SoundCloud and shit and like my covers and like, I don't know, bro. Like even shit that boils down just like my tattoos. Like, I don't, I guess the word would be like, edgy like it's kind of just edgy that's just what it is you know not in like a bad way per se i, I don't know why people consider being edgy bad but, but i don't know i'm rambling i'm fucking rambling but yeah no you're good. that's yeah. that's that's what i try to convey with my music bro um yeah those those three things there's probably a lot more that i could add to this but i don't want to 
talk too much you know and just have like a bunch of run on sentences and shit because i do that <laughs> dude dude no no this is this interview is all about you people are gonna want to know and nah bro like like what's inside of you is important to come out in your music bro like it, it's and i feel like when i listen to your music i definitely understand that i i feel like what's inside of you is definitely coming out Thank um you. yeah bro um so the next question is less about music and more about you. Um, what do you do besides music? Like what, what interests you hobbies type, um, entertainment type? What do you do besides music? Um, I'm really into this, uh, kind of niche hobby, uh, that is ballad songs or butterfly knives. Uh, I like used to have a very like, not big but i had like a collection of like six knives uh and then i like now i have one <laughs> you know i've lost like two the other like two that i had like just, i had to scrap them for parts because like you know um obviously like i'd favor other knives and shit so yeah i'm really into butterfly knives i've always like flipping butterfly knives it's a big hobby of mine you can see it in my recent video i have another video coming out where you can see me with a knife too uh yeah knife collecting is hella cool i love i like that shit um and then long term, like I, another one of my biggest hobbies, like it's like it's like music, but another thing like people don't really understand is like I'm also really into clothes, and and like I've always wanted to be a model, like I've always wanted to model. The issue is my height genetic is really bad. I'm I'm not tall. I'm five ten, and and you think okay that's that's not short. It's not tall enough. You feel me? And, and I I don't like putting that in my head because it it kind of it just leaves room for insecurity. Modeling like has always been a touchy subject because I don't really want to like camera model. I really want to be a, like a runway model. Like I, I really want to hit a, like, a runway walk. You feel me? Like I, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to model. But if I don't end up being a model, it's okay. Um, but it's still a huge ambition for me. It's honestly very, very, very much adjacent to um, being successful with music and blowing up. Like I want to be a, a fucking model. Um, and, and not only for like the sport of modeling, but I love clothes, you know, like I've always loved mm -hmm. clothes, bro. Since before I even was making music, I've always been in the, you know, like I've always been fashionable, I feel like. Um, so I've, I've always loved clothes too, just like I love music. So that's another thing. Um, I, I guess you can call that a hobby. Um, maybe just a little bit like cooked. She's saying like, oh, but I'm not saying buying clothes. It's, it's more so like just putting on clothes for me, dressing, mm -hmm. dressing myself up. Um, okay yeah I, I would say those two things uh i don't know i'm hella i'm hella into nature i like getting outside i really like getting away i like getting away from society um or like cityscapes and shit and like mm. suburban areas like i like getting in like nature and i like going to like forests and shit and like going hiking and, and like just going outside it's another I, I guess you could say it's a hobby like just just kind of being adventurous and shit you know seeing the world but I, I i guess you could also group that into like traveling too like going to like new york was one thing for me that was really fucking like that was like adventuring too and like even though i wasn't like in basking in like nature and like getting away from society and shit like i still had so much fun new york is a very special place bro like if you've been there you know like it's a very special experience being in a city like that um so yeah it was it was really cool uh i'm sorry i lose my train of thought my dad just woke up no, really um okay yeah i would say those three things maybe i seem like a boring ass person only being able to list three other hobbies but no, <laughs> uh, no oh yeah bro video cool games stuff. i love i love video games who doesn't like honestly like i love video games i don't play games as much anymore uh i still love video games but i don't play games as much anymore um mostly because music as a hobby like this is taking up like all everything like listening to music writing music working with my producer friends like being in a, my discord call like being in person going to the studio like just everything pertaining to music just takes up a lot of time but i love games bro and like um i'm slowly working my way back into playing games again and shit because i've had time like for the last two months where i've been traveling around i've been fucking busy i've had like a pretty crazy work ethic i mean bro it was only two months ago i dropped should have known before i dropped that song i already had uh a pretty uh s not i wouldn't say uh, small but like i had a following like i had like 1600 followers on soundcloud i had like 2600 followers on instagram like i had people who were fucking with me like a pretty 
big group of people who fuck with me. Um, but like it was only two months ago I dropped that video and that shit blew the fuck up and now I have a ton, like a, a, a like such a bigger reach, bro, way bigger audience and a lot more people looking at me. Um, like before that I didn't have any labels reaching out to me. I, I could have shared like, but I guess it's kind of private. Maybe I don't know. Who fucking cares? Not like sure. before this shit, I didn't have I didn't have labels reaching out to me. Or now like the dynamic is really really changed bro and everything has expanded like tenfold um so because of that i've had like my attention span hasn't been directed toward video games but like bro lately i've been playing Elden ring again i've been playing like other soulsborne games i'm playing like skyrim and shit so i'm happy that i've been able to like make time for that shit because i love i love games too yeah bro yeah yeah it's important to uh to invest your time in things that you enjoy you know? Of course. Yeah, of course. Bro. So, uh, what are your what are your goals? Like, what do you want to achieve? Um. Okay. A four mentioned. And, um, and it doesn't have to be music. It can be anything. It can be simple things okay. like I want to visit this place or I want to acquire this. You know, what are your goals? Um. A four mentioned. I really want to model. Uh. Like damn your commercial modeling like i want to go model for like dior and like you know like i don't know why i can't think of other designers where i'm cooked my my fucking brain's fried no, but like dior is a good example and like other big fashion houses like vetma and like balenciaga and, you know uh even like number nine like modeling for like asian like uh like japanese or like des designers from asia would be hella cool um that would also uh promote traveling too because i'd get to go to like france and shit because all of like the fashion industry kind of like the music industry is very very prevalent in california the fashion industry is very very prevalent in like in france you know in paris so that would be really cool getting to go to, to france and shit uh and going to like japan to like mm -hmm. if i was modeling for like number nine or like lgb or some shit or, i don't know it'd, it'd be cool you feel me it'd, like it'd be cool um so yeah that's a huge huge goal obviously um uh, obtaining like just long-term permanent not only financial success but just success in general with my career would be very very ideal that's my life you know that's what I'm, I'm kind of building myself around i'm setting myself up for that so not achieving that in a way like i'd, I'd be failing you know like everything that i worked for would kind of be for nothing so which is why like i'm very determined and that's why like I just know that I'm gonna make it. You know, like you, you commit yourself so hard to something, like it's gonna stick. You know, and if it doesn't stick, you're gonna learn how to make it work. You feel me? Um, so I know I'm gonna be successful regardless. But that's two things. Uh, and then things that don't really pertain to music, um, or ascertain to music, or like even modeling and shit, like my two main hobbies. Uh, I think buying my first house. I think when I get my first check, like big, big payment for music. I'm gonna buy property. I really want to uh, also like make crazy income, not only just from music and like stream revenue and merch. Like I want to make music from like investing in property and like and like real estate. And, and obviously, like I want to learn how to like uh, kind of approach the stock market and shit. And so I just want to be rich. I just want to be very very wealthy. And the reason being is, uh, I mean, fuck it, bro. Like being rich, is, is, everyone wants to have money for the most part. Not everyone, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like money's yeah, of the yeah. essence. And um and uh i i want my family to be wealthy mm. forever yeah like fuck it nepotism i don't give a fuck my dad literally my grandparents are migrants bro my dad works he's worked his ass off his entire life to put this roof over my head to give me this opportunity to put me in school so he bought me this computer he bought me this mic even like he, he did all this for me and like knowing that my parents are also old, bro. My 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 parents might be dead, you know, in less than a decade from now. My parents might pass away when I'm in my twenties, you know. Um, so I'm kind of in a rat race, I guess, to to get that financial stability because I want my dad to be alive to see me be successful, not only just from my 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 talent, but just in general. But knowing that my dad, regardless if he's here or not, like knowing that his work contributed toward like his entire bloodline having permanent financial stability you know i know it would make him like cry and make him happy my mom would be really happy my brother would be happy my brother's also going to become successful too because he's a fucking genius my brother's hella smart um so yeah that's that's another thing uh and moving to europe 
or having multiple properties having a house in california having one in having a huge apartment in chicago uh, you know owning property in america owning property in like other countries but i want to get a huge crazy like modern house somewhere in like europe just have like a crazy pad like just a home base in europe bro and like mm -hmm. i just want to have it be on like just acres of land bro wake up i have like a skylight in my room bro and like a big ass window look out the window bro and just see like land and like trees bro and like just literally can hear like the earth bro like hear birds chirping bro and like hear like i don't know bro no yeah it'd be, it'd be crazy it'd be sick, crazy or like or like having a house on the coast or something bro like i don't know i just i want to be very very successful bro and i'm setting myself up for that so we'll just see what the future the future entails we'll see how yeah, things pan bro. out yeah bro one of my biggest questions that i wanted to ask you is like travel and like other places in the world and, oh yeah and i think that the beauty in the world is so fucking beautiful bro like so i'll never be able to see all you know if if earth was like a video game and there was like achievements for every place you go like i, I in my lifetime i won't be able to see the entire world which is kind of heartbreaking mm. but mm. i want to see all of it before i do because mm. you know like another thing like my family has been very restricted to california like my parents haven't really traveled that much my dad like didn't even really leave stockton as a kid my, like my parents they have the story of when they went they drove to um they were trying to drive to the city called tracy and my dad got hella lost because he didn't know the area point being my dad didn't even really like leave stockton when he was my age you know he stayed in the city which is like maniacal to me like that's actually just insane like i would i actually would like kill myself respectfully sorry bro mm. don't want to demonetize you you can fucking cut Dude, that out straight. on the video you're sorry. Straight, bro. I, I would actually like i, I nothing, would bro. <laughs> i would be very 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 let me rephrase that i'd be very unhappy if i limited mm. to not only stockton but california in general like mm. there's so much i want to see and uh yeah i, I love yeah. the thought of traveling and the fact that i've been blessed enough to travel around you know and i've, I've had the opportunities that i've had in the last two months bro it's been it's been amazing yeah bro your amazing. music your music videos are insane bro like the locations the places you've been to um but yeah bro we're we're, we're nearing the end um one of the bigger questions towards the end that i want to ask you is uh so so the main thing is do you believe in anything spiritual and then on top of that is uh do you have questions about life do you have things that you wonder about that you don't understand yet yeah i think one of the biggest questions um uh it's like death i think as humans we, we we wonder about death and afterlife and like if there is an afterlife and it makes me really sad because like my parents like i said they're old i've already talked about this my parents are old my mom is like not in the best health i'm not going to speak too heavily on that but she's not in the best health i don't know how much longer i'm gonna have my mom in my life regardless of her of her age you know like regardless of her passing away from old age that's probably not ideally i'd like that to happen i'd like my mom to live you know very long but her health is you know pretty um dire right now it's, it's not the best um and on her birthday this year like i literally like it was like getting her gifts like packaged and stuff and i was like wrapping stuff for her and like i like started crying because i like thought to myself i'm like bro like am i gonna see my mom like ever again like if she dies like next year to failed health like will i see her again you know like is there really an afterlife are the people that I love, you know, on earth that I, I'm living with right now, like, am I ever going to see them again? You know, is it, or is it just all like, just like a, like a, a wave of ocean water? Like, is it just going to come up and then recede and just leave nothing but like, you know, leave nothing? You feel me? So I don't know. I, I really just think about that uh, for sure. It's, it's definitely something that I, I don't get like super emotional over it, but I don't know. It, it makes you think, bro. Like, is there an afterlife you feel me like is there or like is rebirth a thing you know like there's so much to think about because life bro is it's a treasure bro it's beautiful and uh i'm happy that i'm here there was so many points in time where like i didn't want to be alive you know like where i hated living um and now i'm just blessed bro i'm just happy that i'm here i have so much so much opportunity around me and i have so much uh good in my life bro and i think mm -hmm. well, let's do regardless of your situation i mean i don't want to diminish people's people's problems at all because some people do have it really bad, but like life is beautiful and there's so much you can do with yourself as an individual. And there's so much you can do in the short amount of time that you're here. So I think about that. Uh, and then I feel like I am a very spiritual person. Uh, 
my best friend Mark is also like really, really spiritual too. He he low key put me on to spirituality and like manifesting shit and like having like affirmations and stuff and like he I've always been very, very, very um determined. You know, it's just it's just within the boundary of my personality and who I am. Like I'm a very determined person and I have a lot of energy, like I'm very motivated. Um you know like i'm i'm a go-getter for sure like I, I know what i want and i'm like i'm gonna get it you feel me like i've always been like that um but that fool like really put me on to like the whole like manifesting shit and like having the affirmations and like believing in yourself and like when you put something out there it does come back and if you do good you know the the good acts you do also are returned to you like the universe does speak to you and i've literally seen it firsthand bro like i've seen it happen so it's just like it is it is like something i really do believe in like for example um not even 10 months ago like eight nine months ago i had no friends i had no videographer uh everyone that i grew up with in stockton like went to college um my situation with school is kind of fucked you know like academically i've always been a failure um I've always been really bad with school so my school situation's kind of fucked. Like I'm not going to college. Like I kind of just fell out with everyone because everyone moved away. No one wants to go to school here, or be here. Everyone like hates Stockton, so everyone like moved out. And uh, I also learned like in senior year that the people that I was friends with were like not dirt bags, but like they just weren't people that I was gonna be around. Like I, I always understood that these weren't like friends I was gonna have for you know a, a period of time after high school you know i wasn't gonna keep these relationships going you know even though like at one point i felt like these are my boys you know i'm gonna have them forever i always knew there was more or i didn't know there was more but eventually i did learn when part and i realized that you know these people don't really give a fuck about me like that um and i was alone bro i was very very alone i had no one to talk to i had no one to spend time with i couldn't get out of the house and go socialize i couldn't go actually get real physical interaction all i had was a social media presence and like a thousand followers on soundcloud not even i had like 800 followers on soundcloud and all i had was music bro that's all i fucking had was music uh and myself and my family um that's why i say bro bless my brother for being here yeah, my brother is living with us right now because he's going back to school for for law but if my brother wasn't here bro shit could have hit the fan really bad and i you know would have been a lot worse if he wasn't here to be with me and you know i didn't have him to hang out with bro i'd be fucked um but bro like there was nights where my mom would sit at the foot of my bed bro and i'd cry to that woman and i'd be like i'm so alone like i just want friends like i just want people to interact with and uh my mom like i said my parents have, i said this earlier about music and like rap being sheltered my parents have always been religious and my mom knows that i've been agnostic or i was agnostic like i didn't really believe in god you know, I was very skeptic about religion. I, I, I still don't really support religion, but I believe in God. That's another thing that I could say, like, throughout there. Like, mm. I believe in God. I believe in a higher power. I do believe in, I believe that Jesus Christ was a real person. I do believe partially that he might have been the son of God, but I do believe in God. Uh, and I do, like, pray. Uh, my mom was like, just pray. Like, tonight, just pray about it. And I'm like, all right, bro. So I prayed to an angel, bro. I prayed to Matthew. And I just asked, I was like, please, like, just give me someone, bro. And the day after I woke up to a text from a, uh, it wasn't an unknown number, but it wasn't a number that I had in my con. And it was my ex, like one of my exes that like, I like dated like in like freshman year of high school who I haven't talked to in like two years. And me and her like rekindled and I had someone to talk to, you know? And it was only a month later that I met my videographer. Or I didn't meet my videographer, but I started like filming videos. And then me and Mark became friends again. Mark moved to SF and then I started going to SF and me and Mark made all these new friends, bro. And we had this music collective now. And here we are today, bro. Like I have, I'm getting a wave of new followers, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I just, I held it down and I just kept, no matter how bad the situation was, like I continued to believe in myself and, you know, like my parents and my, my family believed in me and shit. And the people that I did have believed in me. And I just, I stuck to that, bro. And no matter how bad shit got, I just, you know, I held it together, bro, and and the universe really went full circle, bro, and it was given back to me. And mm -hmm. you know, I have I have a friend group now. Like I didn't think it was yeah. possible, but I have a group of friends. And bro, it's it's crazy, bro. Like I said, I used to just I'd spend nights, bro. I'd walk alone at like three in the morning, just around my neighborhood, bro. And I would like literally like down bad type shit. Like I would like have like I'd think of like imaginary friends, bro. Like I would like uh like imagine like a friend group of people. Like I think an inspiration for this was uh there's a group called BNO. 
and yeah, there, yeah. there's this group of artists, yeah, BNO, and them, they're yeah. all, they're, yeah, shout out BNO, bro, hella talented, bro, shout out SG Lily, um, artists from all over the world, bro, and they're all swaggy motherfuckers, they all have the same interests, they all make music, they're all into fashion, like, it's everything that I'm into, and I was like, I just want people like that, and I was thinking, like, bro, in California, and Northern California, it's possible, there's no way, and then, like I said earlier, like, not to ramble too hard but like me and mark became friends again my videographer like i locked in with him i started filming videos me and mark started meeting new friends and shit in sf and like my friend group i got what i wanted everyone in my friend group like in 04 rich we all have swag bro like we all are hella talented like we're all very ambitious people and like the universe really just like went full circle bro and it spoke to me beyond just my career and beyond uh musical success like you feel me like I, it was really just it really just came back to me so i'm happy about that I'm really happy about that it's beautiful what you just said man because Bro, uh, i appreciate it yeah it's there's definitely something more than just us it's not just random bro and of course bro and i appreciate yeah. this i appreciate this this like this call bro and like i appreciate this conversation this isn't like really an interview to me like i'm just talking to you and i'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy that i'm able mm -hmm. to to yeah to voice my feelings bro and i'm happy that you're interested in my not only my yeah, image yeah. but me as a person bro yeah, i appreciate bro. that you're cool as I fuck appreciate dude. that a lot yeah yeah bro, bro like mm -hmm. um we're nearing the end um the last thing i want to do is uh shout outs bro who do you want to mention because i feel like not only are people gonna view this now because you're 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 this person and you're this uh persona but as you grow as you become bigger people are going to come back to this people are going to look up dia go in the dark and they're going to see this so who do you want to shout out bro who means a lot to you who do you want to um just put out there bro i want to shout out my brother my like biological older brother um i want to shout out myspace mark i want to shout out yandre um and, and um i want to shout out all my friends in 04 ridge because that's not even just, it's not even just a collective those are like my best friends bro i'm blessed so yeah shout out to all my friends bro shout out to california shout out to all my fucking supporters um you know shout out the u.s bro shout out russia shout out canada shout out you know shout out fucking spain bro like I mean, shout out Mexico. I appreciate all my listeners, bro. You know, I love my supporters. And, uh, but yeah, as far as, like, musicians, bro, it's really, like, shout out Mark, bro, and shout out Yandere. Did a lot for me. You know, a lot of unwarranted love came from both of those people, and I'm very blessed to have both of those people, not only as, like, other creatives, you know, fellow creatives, but just as friends, bro. Yeah, shout out Yandere and shout out Mark, for sure. And, and um, shit. I I'm definitely forgetting people um there's people that i would shout out but i don't know if they want to be put out there but mm -hmm. just know like i appreciate all my friends bro like long long-term friendships bro people have been there you know from the very beginning people have always believed in me before i ever had like any glow whatsoever i appreciate all that shit you know yeah so, bro cool as fuck yeah I, yeah of course you're cool as fuck dude i'm i'm so glad we had this interview i'm so glad people will be able to come to this and really know who you are I mean, to an extent. I mean, at, at some point, we might be able to come back and and do it all again. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, as you get yeah. bigger, but um. Yeah, that is that's promised because you you gave me this opportunity at a very early point in my career. So. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, I'll come back. It's beautiful. I'll run it back. I'm so glad we did this. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, bro. I'm excited to see see where it goes, bro. I'm so excited. I mean, from the first time I watched your music, no glaze, but like. I was like, damn, like this, no. this, this dude is really, is really going places, bro. So I'm really excited that we did this. Um, I'm really glad I got to meet you and yeah, bro. It's been great. I mean, I yeah, appreciate bro. it. It's not, it's not ever glazing, bro. Uh, we yeah, need to bro. get in a point where we stop saying like, oh, dick riding or glazing. Like, yeah, bro. People, people have, have, there's this like normalization right now where like, mm -hmm. if you show love to anyone, you're dick riding or you're glazing. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro why are we doing that to other creatives and like people who are like you know like talents and shit like you know just show love it's mm -hmm. not enough of love anymore bro and if you are showing love you're glazing you're not glazing mm -hmm. you're just 
a genuine ass person, bro, and you and you, and you support it. So like that's not glazing, bro. For real. Yeah, bro. So it's a, it's important to get away from you know like the social media terms and the and the normal and and the um the societal norms. You know what I mean? Like. It's I don't pay attention to, to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't pay attention to that shit. The only yeah, thing I bro. use social media for is myself, and that's it. I do not go on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't look at Twitter. I, like I'll look at memes on Instagram and like I'll watch reels, but like I don't go. I don't use TikTok either. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't go on social media to 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 pollute my brain with that shit. Mm-hmm. Not to be like on some some boomer shit, lucky. Like no, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, no, I don't I like I don't you, like I filling you. my head with that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, yeah, I try to refrain uh, from doing that. Yeah, bro. Well, it was great talking to you, bro. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really glad this happened, and I can't wait to see where you go, bro. Seriously, I'm gonna be famous as fuck. So. Yeah, I, be- I, I believe it, bro. Like real, like real shit. Seriously, yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. It might take time. I don't know when it'll be. I don't even think. I don't so. want to blow. I, I, I don't want to blow up. Soon, uh, dude. I, I don't want to blow up soon. <laughs> You think, oh, why not? It's like I, I don't, I want more time in the underground. Mm-hmm. I want to keep solidifying and following before I like, mm-hmm. I really blow up. But at the same time, like you could, you could honestly have a pretty rapid, uh, like you Growth. can expand at mm-hmm. a pretty rapid rate. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and, and still have it be healthy. I just don't want it to be artificial. But it wouldn't be because I already have a discography of like a hundred and like fifty mm-hmm. songs, you know, yeah, out there yeah. on SoundCloud and on the internet. So I'm good. Mm-hmm. I could blow up tomorrow, and I'd be, I'd honestly, it'd be green. You feel me? It'd be green. Mm-hmm. But. I want to just give it more time. I don't want to blow up. I want to blow up, blow up, maybe like t- mid 2025, like maybe 2026 mm-hmm. when I'm like mm-hmm. 20, 21. I'm yeah. 19, by the way, bro. I'm young as hell. So I have, yeah. I know I have time, bro. And I'm just trying to make use of it. So mm-hmm. yeah. That's great. That's a great mindset. Hell yeah. And I appreciate it, bro. The interview mm-hmm. was hella fun, bro. I love, I love, I'm happy that I was able to, uh, to, uh, bring a voice to my image. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I don't ever want to come off as mysterious. So. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. That's yeah, why I appreciate I do everyone this. who watched. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. Totally good. <laughs> All right, bro. It was great. It was great. All right, bro. <clears throat> I appreciate it. All right, bro. I'm totally I'm gonna good. hit you up soon because I really um I fuck with you, bro. So. It's good. Yeah. Let me know when the YouTube video gets if it gets edited and when it gets uploaded. Let me mm-hmm. know and I'll I'll promote it and shit. Definitely, definitely. All right, bro. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, bro. Peace, brother. Peace. <clears throat> great inter- <laughs> great interview, bro. One of the best. What a goat. What a fucking goat. Um, before I end this, I'm gonna just throw on throw on his shit because if if you come this far, you need to see this shit, bro. He's going places. person bro i'm not gonna lie and he's seriously like <clears throat> he's really gonna get big bro I, I i truly believe that um 
Yeah, bro. Let's just let's just listen, bro. Let's just. He's so real. He's so real. Um, we're nearing the end, but if you don't follow, go ahead and follow. I do these interviews, bro, and, um, you know, Diego in the Bark, Diego in the Dark is crazy, and just like that, we're gonna have crazy people coming soon, bro, so, like, follow, um, follow on IG just so you know when I'm when I'm gonna stream and uh, yeah bro Diego in the dark is going places bro it's crazy it's actually insane I'm so glad we got to do this um, and yeah great interview one of the best if not the best the best bro like fuck it the best the best interview I've done so far so uh Yeah, bro. Hit it. W interview. Hit it. Hit it with a follow. Um, follow on IG. The IG is uh. Hold up. Cause I want y'all to know when I do more interviews because there's gonna be hella or uh, you know more people. Um. More like real people, bro, and I and I want to put y'all on so. Um, this is the IG Guitar Hero with the H. Um, yeah, bro. Um, yeah, bro. More interviews to come. Um, have a great rest of your night. I'm going to head out. Much love, bro. Thank you for coming to the interview. Fuck with Diego in the dark. And yeah. Good night. Later.